If you look at the shareholders, for most publicly traded American corporations, you'll consistently see two names, Vanguard and BlackRock. These are both large asset management firms that buy a lot of stocks and other securities and combine them into mutual funds and ETFs that investors can buy to get exposed to a large diversified swath of the market without having to manage a bunch of individual investments themselves. Both of these firms have grown enormous in recent years with the rise of passive index investing. This is a strategy where instead of hiring a money manager to pick individual stocks for you, you just buy a large range of stocks almost at random at the current market price and then hold them in a very low fee fund and then hope that the low fees will help you outperform active investment strategies in the long term. And in recent years, this strategy has actually worked quite well. Um, in aggregate, investors in low fee Vanguard funds and other passive funds have substantially outperformed investors in hedge funds and other actively managed funds. And the reason for this is really the fees. So, for example, a lot of hedge funds have a 2 in 20 compensation structure, which means if you invest in the hedge fund, you have to pay the hedge fund manager 2% of your money every year, in addition to 20% of any profits. And while this has made a lot of hedge fund managers very wealthy, hedge fund investors have not done very well and have lost out compared to people who have invested in Vanguard funds or other low fee funds. And to give you a sense of how low Vanguard's fees are, you can look at one of their popular funds here. This is the Vanguard Target Retirement 2060 fund. And this is the fund that I personally keep my retirement savings in. It has a fee of 0.08%. And if you know anything about compound interest, if you have a fund with annual fees of 1% or 2%, it doesn't sound like a lot, but 1% or 2% every single year compounded can really add up. So if you're only paying 0.08% every year, by the time you retire, you can end up having a lot more money just by not paying the fees. So looking at the history of Vanguard, Vanguard was founded in 1975 by John Bogle, and they were a pioneer in this passive index fund approach. And over time, they've grown to be absolutely massive. According to Wikipedia, they currently have $7.7 trillion in assets under management. To give you a sense of scale, U.S. GDP is around $30 trillion a year, so this is about, they have about a quarter of U.S. GDP in assets under management. Um, and Jack Bogle set up Vanguard with a somewhat unique corporate structure. Um, most asset management firms, there's a central company that organizes the funds and administers the funds and then collects revenue from fees and tries to generate a profit. Um, so this is how BlackRock works, um, same for State Street or Franklin Templeton. Um, but Vanguard is different. Vanguard, the central organization that manages all the funds, is actually owned by the funds. Um, so there's no corporation trying to profit off of your fees. You own Vanguard if you own Vanguard funds. Um, so I'm here on their website and they say Vanguard is different from other asset management firms. We're different by design from our structure to our strategy. Vanguard set out in 1975 under a radical ownership structure that remains unique in the asset management industry. Our company is owned by its member funds, which in turn are owned by fund shareholders. With no outside owners to satisfy, we focus squarely on meeting the investment needs of our clients. Um, so, like they're saying here, this is kind of a unique structure, and it's part of what allows them to keep their fees so low. Um, so, in general, I think passive investing is a very good strategy, 
and not investment advice, but I would generally recommend people, unless you want to spend a lot of time thinking about your investments, to just buy a Vanguard fund or some other passive fund and just benefit from the low fees over time. Um, however, there are some potential issues with passive investing, especially if a large percentage of the total market is using a passive investment strategy. So one issue is stewardship. So one of the responsibilities of investor is after you own part of a company to hold management accountable, make sure that they're running the company well, and vote to elect new management if the current management isn't doing a good job, um, and so forth. And so Vanguard talks about this as well on the website. They say Vanguard investment stewardship team has a clear, consistent, and compelling mandate to advocate for good governance practices that safeguard and promote long-term value creation at the companies in which Vanguard advised funds invest. Um, and they also, on the website, they show how they have voted in some of the proxy elections um, and the rationale for why they voted that way. So you can see here, I don't think this is all of their votes because it's only 85 cases, um, but at least for some of these, they explain the situation and how Vanguard chose to vote. And these proxy votes by Vanguard can be very important um, because like I was showing earlier, Vanguard often owns 15% of more of a lot of companies. So they can swing a lot of corporate management votes. Um, they can put people on the board of directors, they can get a new CEO elected, um, and so forth. So this is giving Vanguard a lot of power over the economy for better or worse. Um, and so it's important that they use it well. So I was trying to do some research into this to kind of understand exactly how um, Vanguard's voting and how Vanguard management is selected and kind of how this unique corporate structure worked. Um, so like I said earlier, I have my retirement savings in the Vanguard 2060 retirement fund. Um, so I'm part owner of that fund. And since Vanguard is owned by their funds, um, Vanguard is owned by funds like my fund. And so I'm effectively a, own a very small slice of Vanguard. Um, and so traditionally when you own part of a company, you're able to do a proxy vote for that company. So you, um, if you own, for example, Microsoft stock, um, when there's someone's elected to the Microsoft board, you have a vote to decide who is elected. Um, often companies will have a vote about executive compensation. So if the management of a company you own is trying to pay themselves too much, you can vote against it um, and so forth. So I called Vanguard support um, to ask about voting my shares and they kind of tried to help but didn't really know anything about how the voting process would work. And so I made a tweet to see if any of my followers uh, knew about this and I added the Vanguard group um, and then the Vanguard group got back to me with a DM on the X, um, X platform um, and were very helpful and kind of gave me some information about this. Um, and essentially they said that if you own a Vanguard mutual fund, there's not really any way for you to vote for management. Um, so while in theory, if you own a Vanguard mutual fund, you do, you and the other owners do control that fund. Um, in practice, it seems like they're not really holding regular public um, elections. Um, so I tried to do a little bit more research and I found this Stack Exchange post from 11 years ago um, where someone asks, according to some online sources, Vanguard is owned by its member funds. Furthermore, it is run by its board of directors. However, I could not find anything on Vanguard's website that explains how the directors are chosen. Does anyone have a reference or perhaps a document that explains how Vanguard directors are chosen? And then someone answers, there are 11 members of Vanguard's board of directors. Nearly all, of, ne nearly all are also members of the board of trustees for each Vanguard fund. The CEO of Vanguard is the chairman of the board of directors. 
He's the only one of the 11 directors who is also actively involved in the management of Vanguard. As for the other board members, 10 are independent directors who have no affiliation with Vanguard or the funds they oversee, apart from the personal investments they choose to make as private individuals. These are some of the examples of three of the 10 independent Vanguard board members. Corporate Vice President of Xerox Corporation, former president of Ram and Haas Co., president of the University of Pennsylvania. How are the Vanguard Board of Directors chosen? The answer is in the description of their duties. The board members help select investment advisors for the funds, monitor fund operations, performance and costs, review contracts, nominate and select new trustees and directors, and elect Vanguard officers. So it seems the existing directors select their replacement. As for the reference to mutual funds as owners, see the company timeline on the over, overview information page about Vanguard. Look at the entry for 1975. With John C. Bogle as CEO, Vanguard begins operations as a new kind of firm in which the mutual funds own the management company. Fund shareholders pay only what it costs Vanguard to operate the funds. Um, so as you can see, it's kind of a recursive election process where the um, board members elect the leaders of the funds, who then elect the board members, who then elect leaders of the fund. Um, so there's really no input from the actual fund customers who ultimately do own and control the funds. Um, I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing. Um, I think Vanguard right now is very well run. Um, so if the people currently running it keep running it, I think that's kind of okay. Um, and getting a lot of mass input from retail investors might not actually be all that useful. Um, the reason I wanted to make this video is that Vanguard and some of these other asset management firms through their proxy voting power have a tremendous amount of control over the American economy. And I think right now how that control is wielded is pretty opaque. Um, so I kind of wanted to do some research and make this video to make that information more widely available. Um, I do think Vanguard is very well, well run. Um, I think their fees are very low, which is great. Um, I skimmed through some of the stewardship decisions here and they generally seemed pretty reasonable to me. Um, so if I was able to vote for my mutual fund, I think I would just vote to keep current management. Um, but I do think it would be a good thing if there was a more available process for people to have some say at least. Um, so to close out, the title of this video was Who Controls Vanguard? And like we saw here, it is the Vanguard Board of Directors. And you can see who they are on the website here. So we can look. These are the people that control Vanguard. And then these are the managing directors. Thanks for watching.